You are welcome to day seven of our monthly educational series for the month of July. And this month we have been talking about investments. Day seven means that this is the last video for the month. And I did not know that I could possibly enjoy myself this much talking shop. But I've had a great time talking shop. And I, a few people have asked me, so why have you been hiding this side of you? I've not been hiding this side of me. I hope you know that um, like a sponge, I bring out the stuff within me when I'm squeezed. And you, the audience, have been bringing whatever I've been putting out, out of me with your inquiries, with your questions, with your thirst for knowledge. So I can't wait to find out from you what you want us to discuss next month and in conclusion i had mentioned that today i would dedicate it to giving a few tips based on age brackets that's what we want to do today and i know that from the beginning of the videos six seven days ago <laughs> I have been talking at length about what is permissible when you're in your 20s. In your 20s, you can take risks. In your 20s, you can go for the really high risk investments. If you hit it each time, I mean, if you have a winning streak and you're able to hit over 100% returns each time you double into risky investments, what would happen? is that you will be amongst the richest under 30s we have on earth so why not give it a shot i mean the worst that could happen is that you'd have to start over and then hey you started over or you started just recently so starting over wouldn't be such a big deal of course don't forget your personality and risk appetite have to do with that if you are risk averse and you are just the quiet, melancholic, or phlegmatic type, stick to what you know, but do not just do low risk. Diversify your investments. If you are the go-getter, please, by all means, take risks, calculated risks, and cash out. I wish you the best. So going on, by the time you're in your 30s, you're thinking family, a few more mouths to feed, you start buying diapers, very soon you start paying school fees, there is a tendency to either stop saving or reduce your saving and begin to incur some cheap debts to give your family the kind of luxury you think they deserve. Please note that in your 30s, that is not the time to stop or reduce your savings. It's actually the time to increase your savings. Uh, some two months ago, when I was closing the series, on um, how to deal with debt. We looked into how to increase your income. I believe I spoke about it on the seventh day. So you might want to scoot over there and listen to the things I have to say on what you need to consider to increase your income. But in your thirties, your thoughts must be trained to identify income generating opportunities such that you keep increasing your income, you keep increasing your savings, you avoid debts like a plague because they are able to put a lien. Okay, that's a legal term. They're able to put a charge. It's still a legal term. They're able to um, cap your future. The future you would have. You'll be mortgaging it. Hey, it's still a legal term. You'll be putting it on into subjection to the present. You'll be eating your future now. If you take loans and you get involved in debt and you pledge money you have not yet made to repay it so if you can avoid debt increase your income increase your savings these are the things that would help you in the future you deserve or rather the future you desire so when you diversify your portfolio, it does not mean they are avoiding high risk investments altogether. No, it just means that 
you have low risk, you have high risk, you have medium risk, and you spread your investments around. I mean, some people still have the big breaks in their 40s. So don't be afraid of your age. Don't panic yet. You can still make it happen. Now, in the 40s, you might begin to experience some higher education for your children. That is not the time to unsave. It's actually the time to make sure that you keep pushing your savings, increasing your savings so that it can yield investments. It's also a time to begin to look into passive income. What can I do to make the money I've made keep generating money for me? Sometime last month, I explained that the difference between the rich and the wealthy is that the rich have enough to meet their needs while the wealthy have enough to meet their needs without working. The only way you make money without working is that you have some sources of passive income that are generating money for you, whether you work, whether you go there or you don't go there. That is what investment is all about. Investment is your path to wealth. So when you get into your fifties and you have some things going, they might not be going as well as you want. That is actually not the time to stop working. You might now have come into yourself. You might have understood your purpose. You might have understood what God exactly created you to do. And so working, quote unquote, might be pleasurable for you. It's not might, ought to be pleasurable for you. If it isn't, you might have to take time off to understand what brings you pleasure and how you can make money from it. The earlier you do that, the better actually for anybody of any age. Find out what it is that that passion you have, that thing that marries your heart, your passion, and your hands, your skills that you can improve on with your head, <laughs> your knowledge, you know, marry the three and continue making money in your fifties pleasurably. If you continue making money in your fifties, you can continue to grow the number of chickens that are laying eggs that are giving rise to further chickens. I don't know why I keep saying giving birth. They're like giving rise to further chickens such that you continue to grow and expand your cabal. Now, in the 50s, you earn more, you diversify, you keep adjusting your risk portfolio because of your age and the fact that you should not be doing too much of high risk. Then when you hit your 60s, what you should be doing it's amazing, but it's working on your vision of the future. Yes, that is what you start life with when you're 20. But the vision of the future we are talking about is the vision of the future that doesn't have work in it. What would retirement look like for you? Now, for some people, especially somebody like me, I don't see myself not working at any point in my life because if I don't work, I'll begin to feel there's something wrong. But what would work be? Of course, work would change. Work might change from one-on-one -on -one coaching to writing, simply writing books, writing about your experiences, teaching people through your treatise. So 60s, that's when you plan what you want to do with the rest of your life. What you want to do with the income that is coming from your investments that would help you stay in style. Now, when you hit 70 and you're in your 70s, that is when to now relax. That is when it's all about the grandchildren. It's all about the vacations. Now, of course, you are not trying to live a luxury lifestyle so that you don't have anything to live for those you are going to leave behind. But it's the best time to spend a lot of your time doing the things you love, hanging around the people you love, having those conversations that keep you alert and keep your mind active. It is also the best time to do estate planning. Estate planning is what happens to what I own when something happens to me. It seems to be a morbid conversation to have with yourself. It seems to be that you're entertaining thoughts about death, but hey, death is not even a respect of age. By the time you're in your seventies, I mean, it is just common sense to put your house in order. You can enjoy your things for as long as you want. You can enjoy your passive income forever, but it also makes sense to leave a legacy that would I'd leave you. I do hope that I have charged someone up. I've given somebody direction. I've helped somebody know how to run his or her own life this month with our series on investments. It's at this point that I'm going to close 
the discussion on investments. And I would like to say here, if you need help with your investments, irrespective of the size of money you want to invest, if you need handholding, if you need coaching, if you need financial advisors, investment advisors, or if you need specialized knowledge, someone who can put you through each of the different categories of investment vehicles I spoke about, do not hesitate to reach out. Of course, each video has my contact details. You can reach out to me on any of the many social media I'm on and definitely you would get the kind of help you need. It's been a wonderful time for me. I hope it has been for you. I look forward to coming back next month to talk to you about what you want me to talk about. Don't forget to let me know what it is. See you then. Bye.